In 2022, I graduated from Cambridge University with a Master's in Chemical Engineering after studying for four years. I finished my first year achieving a 2-2 and after a lot of trial and error, I managed to graduate with 80% in my Master's thesis. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Abby and I make productivity and corporate lifestyle videos. And today we are actually making a part two to an old video I made that you guys absolutely loved on study tips and how I went from 2-2 to 80% at Cambridge University. Now, you guys loved my last video, um, but in the comments you have more questions, and I thought, why not make a whole new video addressing some of those questions and actually doing the other side of the video. So my last video was how to study, and this video is things you should be avoiding when studying. And these are things that I feel like are not commonly talked about. I feel like a lot of study videos on YouTube are just very much like, look how pretty my studying is, and look how perfect it is, and it's not very universal because studying just doesn't really look like that for many people. Um, so these are things that I think you should avoid, I personally try to avoid, and really, really helped elevate my grade from a 2-2 to 80%. Now, trust me when I say I've been in the position where I was just like failing all the time, I couldn't understand why I, I couldn't understand the content, I wasn't learning enough, like I was putting the hours in, trust me, and I just wasn't getting what I needed out of that. And I realised it was because I was studying all wrong. There is more about that in my last video, but we're going to talk about some of the things that I was doing wrong and that people generally do wrong that we should be avoiding so that we can study in a fantastic way and we'll get really good grades. So let's get straight into it. So I think the biggest like study mistake that so many people make, including myself, and this leads to so much procrastination, which is just such a huge killer of productivity, and the mistake that we make is seeing a piece of work or something you know you need to get done as a single task. Now, obviously, I'm going to explain exactly what I mean by this. So when you have something you need to do, often you go, right, OK, I need to do this piece of work or start this essay or do this job. You go, you sit down at your desk, you pick up your pen or you open your laptop and you're like, right, produce. Like, I need to produce something now. Like, now I am working. I must produce something. And actually going about a task this way makes the task just like unnecessarily difficult and also frustrates you because you sit there thinking, why can't I get this done? Like, I don't know what to write. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know how to get started. And this is where we need to take a step back and stop seeing a piece of work or something you need to get done as a single task. You cannot expect your brain to just be focusing on other things, doing whatever you're doing with your life, sit down at a desk and all of a sudden be like, oh, I know exactly where I need to go with this. I know what to write. I know what the answer is. I know how to work this out because your brain is not there yet. Like, you need to give it time. So this is where we need to see pieces of work or things you need to do as a three stage system. So you've got the warm up, the deep flow and the review. Now, you wouldn't go into the gym and just like start randomly picking up weights or you wouldn't just walk out your house and just immediately run. You've got to warm up a little bit and this is exactly the same with your brain. Although saying that, I do often do the former things, but I shouldn't. You shouldn't do anything without a warm up, even though sometimes we do. Warming up your brain gets your thoughts flowing and can help ease you into a state of deep work, which we'll touch on in a moment. So what are some things you can do to warm up your brain? Okay, if you are sitting down to do something essay based, like you know, just something you need to write out, instead of opening your Word document and thinking, right, off we go, relax, take 10 minutes and just do some reading on the topic. Whatever you're about to write about, whatever you're about to discuss, just do some reading, get your thoughts flowing, get your brain thinking. And as well as this, or instead of this, you can also note down about three to four thinking points. By doing this, you're warming up your brain to reach a state of deep work by getting it thinking, getting ideas flowing. Okay, let's do another example if you have more of a mathematical problem. You can't just expect yourself to just sit down and be like, oh, I know how to solve this. Don't worry about it. Sometimes problems can be solved this way, more in like GCSE A level, problems are very short. And sometimes like if you practice them enough, you can just sit down and solve them. But when you get to a degree level, problems are usually like at least half an hour long. There's so many sections of them. They like relate to so many different things. It is a lot harder to just sit down and just be able to solve it on the spot. You need to do some proper thinking to get there. But obviously to sit down and just know what you need to think about is quite difficult. And this is why we need to warm up our brain. And how we do this, it's again, sit down and just relax. Sit down, don't have any pressure on yourself to just get straight in with it. Sit down and think, okay, let's look at the problem. What are all the variables in the problem? What is the answer that I'm actually trying to reach? Like, what do I actually want from this? What's the end result? And then give yourself thinking time. Just sit, 
sit and ponder and think and write random notes anywhere you want and just try and bring together things in your head. Don't sit there and think, I need the answer now. Just let your mind start to think, let the thoughts start to flow. You can also read some past examples of similar questions and this will help get your thoughts flowing. So the reason we want to get all of these thoughts flowing is because we want to enter a stage of focus work or even deep work. Now, what are these things that I'm talking about? Now, focus work is just where you're thinking and you're getting the work done and every, like all your thoughts are flowing and you're focused. It's like pretty self-explanatory, it's focused work. Um, but deep work is actually a state of peak concentration that lets you learn hard things and create quality work quickly. Computer science professor Cal Newport first described this concept in his book, Deep Work, which talks about how the distracted economy that we live in is impacting people's success and ability to perform well. Deep work is a state where you're so, so, so focused in that work that the work is almost doing itself. You're not really acknowledging like where you're at with it. You're, you're ignoring everything around you. Time is stood still and you are so focused on this work that it just starts to happen. The answers just come to you. And this is where like great results are really produced. But it's actually really, really hard to reach this stage of deep work. It's a little bit like meditation. I've read things on meditation where that you have to sit there for so long, concentrate, and to actually get into like the state of meditation is like really, really, really hard. But once you get there, it's supposedly like amazing. I've never managed it. I'm not, I don't, to be honest, I've really never tried. Um, but it sounds great. This I think is really similar to deep work. So I have been in deep work before and honestly, it's like such a surreal feeling. It's like so much fun. Like work sometimes just is not fun. Like. Obviously, like so many people, we all think that like there's sometimes work is just so boring. But when you're in a state of deep work, like, oh my gosh, like it's literally like such a surreal feeling. Like time does stop and you're just working and you feel like so like, not excited, but enthusiastic about the work because there's so many thoughts flowing through your head. You almost can't put them onto paper fast enough. If you've not reached a state of deep work, honestly, do some research on it and try and get that. It's really, really great. But that is where great things happen. That is where your best work will be produced. And so this is why we want to warm up. Don't go and sit at your desk and just start a task. Who's gonna know the answers when they do that? Warm up your brain, try and reach a state of deep work. And this is where you'll produce high quality results and you'll really start to understand things that you're learning. And once you've done this, the final stage is review. And it's like, oh, I finished my work, can't bother to review it. And no, you don't need to write some massive review on what you've just done. But I like to, at the end of like a task, sit back and be like, okay, what do I understand from this? Like, what am I taking away from this? Or if it's something that like, you don't really need to understand much from, you more need to produce, where am I at at the moment and what's next to do? So if you're like writing an essay and you've gotten halfway and you've finished, you've come out of deep work, you've started to lose your focus a bit and you've gone, right, okay, I'm stopping for now. Just make some notes whilst you're kind of in that thought process. Okay, next time I might want to talk about this, this and this. So when you come back to it the next day, a couple of days later, you know where to start from and your warm up is going to be so much easier in feeding your brain with thoughts and getting your thoughts flowing. Same with if you're doing some revision, at the end of it, look at it and go, okay, what do I understand from this? What are the key points that I need to remember? And then you can casually think about those things now, like just like sit on them for the next day, the next few days, and when you come back to it, that should hopefully have consolidated in your brain. Now, splitting tasks up into these three stages just saves you from that procrastination. It saves you from that sitting at your desk wanting to bang your head against the wall, which we've all been there, and it's not a good time. And it also means that when you come back to doing more work, you're more prepared and you understand the topic much better. So yeah, that's something that's like incredibly useful. I literally did it the other day with planning this video. I didn't know like what content to produce and I was getting all stressed like, oh, I just have zero ideas in my head. And I was like, Abby, come on, use your own techniques. So I did some research, I did some reading, I read through comments and then I was like, oh my gosh, I know the perfect video to produce. And then I got into, I wouldn't say I reached deep work that day, I just was focused, focused work, planned this whole video and then reviewed and gone, okay, next steps, I need to film on this day. And here we are, filming the video. So trust me, it works guys, give it a go. But anyway, let's move on. That was a really long one. The rest aren't so long. Okay, next thing that we should avoid when studying is ego studying. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I've made it up and that's what we're calling it. So studying for the sake of being able to say you studied, to be able to clock your hours in um, and to be able to look at the fantastic work you produced, even though you understand none of it. 
and I'm 100% a culprit for this. Uh, I absolutely was a criminal for making pretty notes I just did not understand. I had so many notes, I decided to write them all out in fantastic colours, all colour coded, looking great. But every time I got to a question, I couldn't really apply anything I'd learnt because, again, this was just passive learning um, that I did really to satisfy my ego of thinking I worked really hard today. And it's a fine line because obviously like sometimes doing a little bit to make you feel less stressed is better than doing nothing and then feeling really stressed. But if you know that you're doing like particular pieces of work just for the sake of being able to like have the work done and be like, yeah, yeah I have studied today, but you know you learned nothing, like what was the point? You may as well have gone out and have fun. Like don't even bother with it. Make your studying ugly, make your studying like chaotic and just like a mess. It shouldn't be like this perfect, beautiful note-taking situation that you can like show everybody and tell everybody how hard you worked. Because if you can do that and you know you've understood all the content, great. But personally, I find the more you do that, probably the less you understood. Within this ego studying is, as I mentioned, overworking. Like clocking in so many hours a day just so that you feel like you studied might not actually be the best thing. Take a look at yourself. This is like a very personal thing. Have a look at yourself and be like, am I understanding the content? Are the hours I'm doing that like, you know, I'm thinking are so great because I'm working so hard, am I understanding it? If you're not, then you need to see what's going wrong there. Likelihood you need to work a little bit less. Likelihood you might need to make less notes and do some more work on actually understanding them. Have a look at yourself and be like, am I ego studying or am I actually understanding the content? Okay, next one. This is one that is quite obvious, but I actually want to talk about a different part of it that I feel like nobody really talks about. And this is cramming. I feel like everybody knows you should avoid cramming like night before the exam, don't try and learn everything probably isn't going to be the best. But another form of cramming that is nothing to do with the night before your exam is trying to get through ridiculous amounts of content or past papers or something well in advance of your actual exam but because there's so much content you're just rushing it. So if you think oh it's a good idea to get through all the past papers because then I'll have seen every past question but you're cramming them, you don't actually have enough time to do them all, so you're just rushing them and you're trying to get through as many as possible, as quickly as possible, even months before your exam, but like say there's like 100 past papers, that's gonna be cramming. And this is something I did in my first year of university. It is not going to be beneficial. And the reason for this is because it's gonna take you out of active learning and push you into passive learning. So when you've got time to do an exam paper properly, you're going to be thinking, you're going to be scribbling things down, you're going to be really using your brain and understanding, creating those connections in your brain. When you're rushing an exam paper, you're going to be making up some answers, you're going to be using your notes for the whole thing, which isn't always a bad thing, but if you're just copying it out, then that's not ideal. And likelihood, you're going to jump to the answers because you're going to run out of time. And you think, well, I'll learn from the answers because I don't have the time to do the paper. No. That's not active learning, that's not going to create meaningful connections in your brain and that is why it's called passive learning because you're basically just reading something and trying to remember it, which is a less efficient way of learning and negatively affected me in my first year of university. I personally believe it's a lot better to do less with more thinking than it is to do more with less thinking. So if you're overwhelming yourself with the amount of content you're trying to get through, the amount of past papers you're trying to get through, take a step back and think, am I actually understanding this? Is this actually going in? Because if it's not, I need to reduce the amount I've set myself. I need to do less papers, but do them properly. And so yeah, that's something you should avoid cramming, even if it's months before your exam. I personally don't think it's very good. Okay, next thing to avoid is having your phone nearby. Now, first of all, this is personal choice and I'm not gonna sit here and baby you and be like, you need to lock your phone away because it's going to distract you. Like, if you have your phone near you and that works for you, cool, but studies have shown literally everywhere, like every study you look at, it is a distraction. Even when you're not on it, the notifications come up. Even when the notifications aren't coming up, you're thinking, oh, I wonder if, <laughs> if I'm gonna get a message. It's just temptation. Your phone's next to you. I pick it up, I watch one TikTok. Now I've watched five. Now I'm in bed for the next hour watching TikToks. We've all been there, so this one really is just a self-evaluation. Take a look and be like, is my phone distracting me? Do I need to put it somewhere else? Do I need to turn it off? If it's affecting your work, you just need to really acknowledge it and not be like, oh no, it's, it's fine, like it doesn't distract me. And um, when you low-key know that the whole time you're thinking about whether someone's replied to your message or something else is happening that you're missing out on. A way to help with this that I find is if you don't want to like lock your phone somewhere or turn it off, 
studying in public, so like when you study in a cafe, same with maybe a library, but yeah, it's good to have like pressure of people around you sometimes to make you work a little bit harder. Okay, and final point, really sorry if I'm rambling, really hope all of this has made sense. Sometimes I talk and I think I made complete sense to myself, but I just don't know if I translated it very well. But final point is having mess and clutter in your study space is something that you should try and avoid. Visual reminders of disorganization actually drain your cognitive resources, reducing your ability to focus. And so if you've got a messy space, a messy desk, your focus is just gonna be reduced. Again, it's gonna be harder to reach the deep work state. And so we should just avoid that. I have mentioned earlier in this video that studying should be like chaotic and like sometimes messy. That's a different, I want to just make a clear definition between like mess like snack wrappers and empty cups are not the kind of messy I mean when I say something should be chaotic. By chaotic and messy, I mean like lots of papers full of lots of working out to let your mind onto the paper so that you can see it. Two, two different things. Studying in mess, not great. Creating mess while studying, pretty great. And on that, a couple of useful things that you can have on your desk that can help you Increased productivity can be a plant. This is apparently meant to improve your mood and reduce stress. Can't say I've had major effects from it, but it's always nice to have a plant at your desk. A sand timer, one of those things that you flip, uh, which is meant to be really useful because, so you sit down at your desk and a little bit like how we said, you sit there and you're like, I don't know what to do. Turn your sand timer, call that your warm up. When that sand timer stops, you need to start getting on with some proper work. But whilst that sand is flowing, you're warming up your brain. There's no stress here. We're getting the thoughts flowing. Um, and yeah, it's just really useful for just being like, right, I'm doing this task now. Turn the sand timer, we're off. And last one is a secret chocolate stash because I don't know about you, but if I've got like a big piece of work to do, I literally can't get started without a cup of tea and some chocolate because it just like makes me feel happy. And I think, yep, I've got this, I've got my chocolate, I've got my tea, life's good. So I personally think a secret chocolate stash is just a necessity in life. And it's great to keep it by your desk. So that is all my points, everything that I think we should avoid while studying. I hope you enjoyed the video guys, I hope it was helpful. Obviously if you have any more questions leave them in the comments because maybe we'll even have a part three. Thank you for watching, your support on my channel is honestly so amazing and I'm so so grateful for it. Please do like and subscribe whilst you're here if you did enjoy the video, but I shall see you in next week's video. Bye!